Hello everybody, my name is Daniel Richardson and I am the WCPW Review Guy. And uh, I just got back from vacation, uh, went vacation down in parts unknown. There you now, it's a nice place to visit, but I, I don't recommend staying there for over a weekend. Like seriously. All the fucking face paint, all the fucking mask. Bunch of fucking psychopaths down there. Anyways though, and I am back here right now to review WCPW Loaded Episode 5. Bam. Alright, so let's get right into it. Uh, we're still in Newcastle. Uh, crowd's fucking on fire, which I love. Uh, everything looks great. Uh, one thing that caught me off guard, you know, early on was, uh, oh, Alex Shane and uh, Dave Bradshaw, still commentators. At first, I was a little sad because I was like, oh no, King Ross lost his job. <laughs> like, I, I do feel bad for him. It's the right choice. Like, these guys just, they bring, like, professionalism, sophistication with them. Like, it just, it, it, it gives, like, a, like I said before, an air of uh, credibility. Like, it really does. Uh, not as that, but they're just, they're funny to listen to. They, I mean, I don't, I, once again, I don't, I'm not familiar with these guys at all. Like, this is all I know them by, is the WCPW. I'm sure they had a career elsewhere. Like, one guy said he's a former wrestler or whatnot. Um, but you can tell these guys have probably been commentating for a while together. I mean, they just have that natural uh, chemistry. They really do. Uh, and not just that, but I mean, you know, not only are they funny and they're good at but they, there are certain situations, and I'll get to them when I, when I reach them, where they just kind of added more. Like, they, I don't know, like, like a seasoned fucking commentator hit, you know, hit their marks. You know, I'll, I'll get to it here in a second. I'm sorry, I'm getting off track here. Uh, but I, I do feel bad, because don't get me wrong, I don't want to badmouth King Ross. He did a great job. And I, I, I hope, uh, God damn it, you guys can give him a job doing something else there. Like, and I'm not just talking about doing the uh, WTF moments or whatnot. I'm talking about an actual gig at the show. Whether if it's like, you know, he starts doing interview segments. Microphone's only plugged in. Um, actually, plug his microphone in, though. Uh, or, um, you know, maybe give him like his own, like, King's Corner, like, interview segment or something like that. You know, like a Piper's Pit or, you know... Well, highlight reel or something, you know, something, something along those lines, you know. Uh, but something, I don't know. I felt bad for the guy because he, he was really good at what he did, you know. Just these two guys, don't take this the wrong way, but they're, they're better. They really are, and I'm, you know, glad they're the voice now of WCPW. So, all right. So we open up with a uh, like one of the best little mini skits, uh, you know, uh, Adam Pacitti. We go to his office, and he's on the phone with Roman Reigns. And uh, it's just funny because he's just like, you know, listen, Roman, I can't have you work here until you clean yourself up. Ah, it just, it's funny. That's just funny shit right there. I'm sure Roman has a sense of humor. Anyways, uh, he seems like a serious, you know, or a funny guy. So. Uh, anyways, uh, but he announced that, you know, tonight we're going to have a um, number one contenders match for the world title, and it will be between uh, Doug Williams and Aaron Stevens. Now... I don't have a lot of complaints about this episode at all. I got little nitpicks, and once again, me nitpicking does not reflect because once again, I respect every motherfucker out there. Like it's in this you know organization, whether they're the wrestlers or the people writing it, whatever. These are just my personal opinions. I'm just nitpicking a little bit. I don't my mic's not even plugged in. You can't take me that seriously anyway. So, anyways, um, but the one thing kind of you know. And I'm not talking about Abacini, the real person. I'm talking about just the, his general manager character. He's a bit of a pussy. I'm sorry, Pachiti, you're a pussy. Um, you've been manhandled by Rampage in the rain. Like, he grabbed you around. You just got hit in the fucking face at Built to Destroy. Knocked your glasses. Dude, you got bitch slapped by Blompier. There is no... And no one's paying the price. Not one person is actually paying the price for any of this. Like, you're just, like, letting people, like, run all over you. It's ridiculous. And... Don't get me wrong, I mean, on paper, I like the end result. I like that, you know, you know, Dan you know Big Damo's not going to be stripped, uh, which I'll get to my reason behind that in a second. But anyways, I I'm glad he's not getting stripped because, I mean, once again, you, you don't want to do that. But I feel like you would at least try to stack the deck against him. Like, literally, I like, put him in a triple threat, a fatal four-way, or for fuck's sake, a battle royal even. You know, just somewhere like, you know what? <laughs> you got the title. You know, you got the title... I can't change that. You know what? The referee didn't see because you know a pile driver is illegal, but so is a still chair shot. And you know it happens all the time behind the referee's back. As long as you don't get caught with it, it shouldn't matter, right? So you know you got away with it. Congratulations. But guess what? 
fuck you, because now, since I'm general manager, you're going to be in this gauntlet match for your job, or something. And he didn't. He literally just takes two people, and he's like, they're going to fight, you're going to fight, you know, the winner. And it's like, nothing against Doug Williams or Aaron Stevens either, but it's like, it's like if Brock Lesnar was in the same situation, and it's just like, all right, Brock, you know what, fine, you cheated to win, but guess what, buddy? Here's your punishment. Dolph Ziggler and fucking uh, Zack Ryder is going to have a match. You fight the winner. How's that punishment? Like, I'm sure it's going to be a good match, but still, it's like, Damo's should just mow over any of these people. And there's no way he can lose the title, because, I mean, let's face it, we want to see the Rampage Damo, you know, payback match. So, I don't know, it just, it, this kind of struck me as odd, that's all, that's, that's all. The other thing was, and once again, I know, it, it, it you know, we're, we're beyond kayfabe at this point, but I can't help it. I still want a little reasoning with my storyline. They just grabbed two people. Now, don't get me wrong, these two, you know, Doug Williams is a veteran of uh, the British independent scene. And, of course, Aaron Stevens was formerly uh, Damian Sandow, WWE, he, you know, at this point. Now, there's people coming, you know, later down the road, but at this point right now, highest profile, you know, wrestler they've had in WCBW. But it's like, these guys just came in off the street. Like, whenever, like, we're having the one contender match tonight, and I'm just like, in my, and quickly in my mom, it's like, what, El Aguero, Joe Coffey, you know, any of these guys who's been around in one match? No. It's like, no, we're getting these two guys. They have name recognition, so. Now, I know it's an independent wrestling company, and that's the main thing about independent, you know, it, it's traveling wrestlers, you know. So, a big name comes in, of course they're going right to the top. I, I get that, but just saying from, like, a, re or a fan standpoint, it's like, oh, Joseph Connors, that would have been, you know, a great match. No. Nah. Goes, go, goes to the big name, guys. And then the last thing, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I know I'm just bitching. This is, trust me, this is going to be a positive review overall, but right now I'm bitching. You know, the pile driver's banned, you know, for good reason. But, like, tonight, on tonight's show, there was, like, a tombstone pile driver and a Canadian destroyer. And the referee saw both of them and then bat a fucking eye. He's just like, ah. Apparently, your neck will only break if you're facing one way. <laughs> or it's okay if you flip with it. It's like, ah, you're safe. Like, I, I don't get the logic behind that. It's almost just like, what, did you had a, a freaking fucking spin to that? That's all right. It's, it's cool. It's cool. Whoa, 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 shit, wait a minute. Is that, is that a pile driver from top rope? No, it's fine. It's fine. Hey, are you doing a standard fucking pile driver? No, get the fuck. Ring the goddamn bell. Yeah, he's out of here. What? Anyways, I'm, these are just minor complaints. That's all. Let's get to the show, though. Let's get to the fucking show. First match. Match, you know, right now, first match of the evening is my match of the week, match of the night, whatever you want to call it, this was it. Out here right now, I know I get like super excited, like last time when uh, it was uh, Noam Dar versus Jay Lethal. I'm going to say it again, match of the year. Like seriously, it outdid that. It was triple threat. You had Noam Dar versus El Aguero versus Will Ospreay. And I was like, and I've seen uh, the, the the big man, the uh, Will Ospreay versus the uh, Ricochet match that everybody was like, you know, flipped out. And it was awesome. I loved it. I thought it was a great fucking match. And of course, you know, I'm, now I'm, you know, after watching WCPW for over a month, I'm totally familiar now with uh, Noam Dar and El Aguero. So, already knew the match was going to be good. Had no idea it was going to be this great. Like, seriously, I was just kind of like, you know, it'll be good, but it won't be Jay Lethal, Noam Dar good. It'll be good, but it won't be that good. Oh my God. Fucking awesome. Like, and I know, like, you know, Cornette is all like, I don't like that flippy bullshit. I love that flippy bullshit. He's up, Pops. It's okay. Awesome. Like, flat out fucking awesome. Uh, so many high spots in them. But, dude, like, when Noam Dar slaps on the uh, Champagne Supernova, or sorry, Super uh, Knee Bar on both of them, fucking awesome. Uh, that weird fucking flip kick he did. Like, he did, like, a spin kick. Like, they're, they're taking turns, like, bashing Liguero in the corner. And then he turns around and after, uh, oh, he hits his. Like, at I, I, one point, Noam Dar's, you know, bent over. He does, like, this weird, like, spinning like a scissor kick in a way, like in the back. It was fucking amazing is what it was. Uh, just high octane, non-stop action from opening bell to the closing bell. It was great. The fact that they were all three uh, faces was great too, because, I mean, that's another thing too. Seems like most companies just stick to that whole good guy versus bad guy thing. That's it. Fucking, that's, that's it. That's, that's it. You know, it's all we're doing. And no, it was refreshing to see, because, I mean, it's like this competition. And it was great. You know, they all shook hands, you know, you know, before or after the match. Uh, they got standing ovation, and it deserved it. I get it really well. And, you know, the crowd sometimes gets a little carried away with the fight forever chance, or this is awesome chance. Uh, this one was well-deserved. Like, it was it was great. Like I said, I could, you know, kudos to all three. 
Uh, and, but I was glad that El Aguero did not get pinned because, like, we knew Will Ospreay was going to go over. But, you know, he's he's such a big name. And really, Nolan Dar, I mean, the fact that, you know, he's still in the Cruiserweight, uh, or at least, you know, as far as I know, he's still in the Cruiserweight uh, Open or Challenge or whatever the fuck it is. Cruiserweight Classic, sorry. I don't watch the, their products, so. Uh, anyway, but he's still in it. So, there's a chance, I mean, you know, these guys could move on, you know what I mean? But, like, El Aguero, he's local flavor. Like, he is WCPW, you know? So, I'm just glad he didn't, like, trash him on the way out. Like, you know, he, he didn't get beat. He didn't get pinned. So, I like that, you know? He's still losing the match, but he didn't get his shoulders pinned to the, you know, the match. So, uh, overall, really good stuff. Now, I'm kind of jumping ahead with this real quick, but I feel like this is the best place to bring it up. They keep talking about, you know, you know, we've got a new women's division, and eventually a woman's title will be introduced. And I know the roster isn't, like, super big yet, but I do feel like, you know, is there enough women for a women's division? But you got a ton of dudes anyways. Like, here, like, they definitely could use a secondary title. And I know you could be like, well, you know, Daniel, they use the Ring of Honor. I'm like, no, no, that's the Ring of Honor title, though. WCPW needs, like, their own actual, like, intercontinental title. Or I guess what, what the equivalent would be to an IC title. The UK title. The WCPW United Kingdom title. Bam. There it is. And, I mean, because these would be, I mean, that would be a great UK title match right there, you know. These guys will definitely give legitimacy to the to the title. And since you're not planning on bumping them up right now to the main event, boom. It's the perfect, like, workhorse title. So, just a suggestion. Just throwing it out there. But, uh, yeah. No, overall, awesome fucking match. Loved it. Uh, we get a uh, promo with uh, Prospect, uh, who, who has grown in numbers. We got uh, James R. Kennedy as the manager, and then of course you got uh, Archer, Gracie, and then now Drake. And dude, is an awesome fucking promo. Like, I'm a big fan of Kennedy. I, I, I just dig his look. I dig his style. Uh, it, it's just great. And he cuts a killer promo, which won't mean shit by the end of the night, but whatever. At this moment, I'm like, yes, this guy is awesome. Uh, we get a segment with uh, Joseph Connors and uh, Joe Hendry, which was just fucking hilarious. I loved it. Uh, Hendry still interrupt. Like, you, you know, as Connors like, you keep interrupting me. And as he's saying it, you know, Hendry's like, I don't interrupt. I never do that. It just, I don't know, it, it's funny. I liked it. Uh, however, you know, it, it, you know, they're, they're still playing with that tension. So, you know, Connors leaves him alone. So the next match is uh, Alex Gracie with Prospect uh, going up against Joe Hendry. And so he's got the entire fucking, like, prospect camp in his corner right there. Like, all three of them out there. And, of course, Henry's on his own. This match was solid as well. I really enjoyed it. My only problem with it was, and don't get me wrong, I'm cool with, you know, Henry winning because I'm, I'm, I'm becoming a big Henry fan. Uh, although, I will say, I didn't care for the Joe Henry song or the, you know, the TNT parody. Like, I wish he would just came out with the Joseph Connor song. Like, even though they're kind of on the riff right now, it just would have been funny. He's just like, this is how unselfish I am. I'm going to keep playing the song even though you left me. It, it, it still it would have worked. I, I love that song. But anyways, um, and I'm cool that Henry, you know, Henry won, but like, during the entire match, is essentially four against one. Like, he's being quadruple teamed the entire time. And just massively kicks everybody's ass and then picks up the win. And don't get me wrong, it made Henry look awesome. Like, it made him look super strong, but it made Prospect look weak as fuck. Like, even cheating and have all four. Like, it wasn't just like one guy. It wasn't just like if James, you know, Kennedy was in the corner, like, you know, fucking him up. No, he could have got out of that no problem and then went on to win. But the fact you get, like, two actual wrestlers out there, like, you know, who are having some free time, they're like, fuck it, we're going to beat up on Joe Hendry. And the fact that Hendry still overcame all that and still picked up the win, I'm just like, fuck. Because I like Prospect. I'm not going to lie. I'm a Prospect fan. Uh, and I know you got to have winners, you got to have losers. I get that. But still, it's like, ah, oh, guys. Uh, and it just made it even more horrible when uh, at the end of the match, they all beat down Hendry, four against one. Connors runs out, and they all just scatter. They all scatter. Now, I'm hoping this is going to play off later on, and I'll get to that. But the thing is, they all scatter from Joseph. Now, I'm a big Connors fan. I'm, I'm a huge Connors fan, actually. I wouldn't scatter from Connors, though. Like, you know what I mean? Like... They've already showed the very first episode Gracie and Archer beating down Connors. Just two people beating him down. They had three wrestlers and a manager in the ring. And they scattered. What? Hendry's already taken care of. Hendry's already laid the fuck out. He's done. And here comes Connors. I mean, they act like it was Stone Cold Steve Austin or some shit. They literally just act like the big red machine walked down there and they're like, fuck this and got out. Now, 
once again, they, you know, because, you know, we're building, you know, the storyline is building, the build, you know, it's building, 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 building. Maybe at some point, you know, when Connors does eventually screw over Hendry, you'll realize that was part of the plan. Like, you know, he's in cahoots with, you know, Prospect or whatever. I don't know. But that's the only way it makes sense because if not, that literally means like Prospect just ran with their tails between their legs from Joseph Connors. And that's no restrict. I mean, I, I love Connors. I'm a big Connors fan. I want to see him do a righteous kill DT to everybody. But really? Come on, Prospect. I believe in you. Uh, but anyway, so... That's it. And then we have a moment, and it's a really cool moment too. Because I mean, once again, I like a lot of people. There should be people I like, so it's hard for me. You know, it's, I, you know I'm torn because I'm like, I want to see Prospect, you know, prosper. But then at the same time, the Hendry Connors, like when they kind of made up, loved it. Like it was just like, all right, cool. Like even though you know it's going to end eventually, right now, let's write it out. It's, it's a good time. So uh, we get a uh, comedic skit between uh, Martin Kirby and Grado. Uh, I don't know nothing about Grado. Uh, they, they gave him like an announcement. Like whenever they announce someone big coming, they always like, you know, there's our newest signee. And I never heard of Grado. Like, I don't, I don't mean that disrespectfully. I just, I don't keep up with British wrestling. So uh, this is my first foray into like, this is my first month, like getting myself immersed in it. So, uh, however, the segment was gold. Uh, just funny. I, I loved it. I, I can't wait to see more. Like the only thing that was really missing was uh, Adam Pacitti. Like, just sprinkle a little Parmesan on top of that would have been perfect. But, uh, it, you know, for what it was, great. Uh, speaking of Parmesan, Pachitti comes out there and he announces the women's division and uh, how it's going to kickstart off. Um, once again, and they, he mentioned then, but in one of the promos later on uh, in the evening, they said that at like, one of the upcoming shows, they're going to actually, you know, reveal the woman's title. And it's going, you know. And I'm just like, is, is there, there isn't really enough people. Is there like, I don't know who they have in reserve, so there may be a lot more females coming. But I, as of right now, there's only two. And it's like, it seems a little premature to be like, women's division and women's title. Like, you shouldn't announce, you should have did it. You know what I mean? Like, and he just did a video, not uh, Pachini, but uh, Blompia just did a video about the, the Divas Revolution. He's like, you shouldn't have mentioned it. You should just do it, you know? And I'm thinking the same thing, like, guys, you know. Really? Just, just go with it. Uh, but the match is between uh, B. Priestley and uh, Nixon uh, Newer. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Newer. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Was not expecting much out of this. And I'm not trying to be sexy like that. Because uh, I, I am a big time female pro wrestler. In fact, I prefer female wrestling as opposed to like, you know, some stupid ass lingerie pillow fight or, you know, bra and panties, evening gown match. I'm just, I'm not into it. But wrestling like I, I want to see women like I want to see wrestling and but thing is like you know there's only a handful in the history of women wrestlers that's, that's out there um and don't get me wrong the ones that are there are great so but typically I've been on I've you know I've done I've you know in my area local area I've seen a lot of independent shows and uh, it's weak sauce usually so I, I wasn't like I wasn't you know wouldn't think it's gonna be garbage but at the same time I'm just like well this you know I honestly like this is probably gonna be my worst match of the night it was awesome like seriously Dude, these chicks were hard hitting. Uh, you know, never a dull moment. Uh, there were a few botches, but once again, there's some botches in their matches too. So I mean, because I've seen people like already kind of like, oh, they messed up. I'm like, what really? Fuck off. Uh, dude, they put on a hell of a match. Uh, real quick, did, did anybody else get a little a little turned on when uh, Ob took the? You know, she licked her face first, and then took her gum out and put it in. The, no, it was just me. It wasn't just me, fucking Alex uh, Shane. He, he liked it. Who give me the look, fucking? I'm sorry, I digress. Uh, but no, damn good match. Uh, my God. And like I said, a few times that match, like, really surprised me. Like I said, they, they were stiff as fuck. Uh, it is with the Canadian Destroyer, which once again, I'm like, no DQ, I guess. I don't know. Uh, however, the, the, the only thing I, I noticed, at least from my vantage point, was that her shoulder was not actually down, but they made the three count anyways. But, you know, whatever, still an excellent fucking match. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to this uh, women's division. I hope, you know, if, if this is a, a, you know, this is like, you know, a glimpse of what's to come, then we're off to a good start already. So, uh, but, yeah, so that was a good match. Uh, so up next we got, uh, we were introduced to the tag team of uh, Johnny Moss and uh, Liam Slater. And once again, I don't know either one of these guys. They're just making their debut here. Uh, Johnny Moss is the veteran, and of course, he's taking Slater under his wing. Uh, during the interview, though, uh, Kennedy shows up, James R. Kennedy, and he's trying to you know recruit uh, Slater for Prospect. Of course, it you know goes wrong. So the next match, Prospect with uh, Alex Gracie and James R. Kennedy in their corner, going up against uh, Liam Slater and Johnny Moss. And 
holy fuck. Talk about a debut. Oh my god, dude. He, I'm, like, I'm already on these guys' nuts already. Like, dude, like, Moss and Slater are great. Uh, dude, they, they dominated. And that's a bad thing, too, because literally, they literally just beat the shit out of it. Like, it, it was a squash almost. It was a practical squash match. Uh, yeah, Prospect got jobbed out hard in this match. And, like, you know, Moss was, or, yeah, he was, you know, he's hard hitting, fucking powerful. Dude, when Drake came off of that, like, that super code breaker, like, that flying code breaker, whatever the fuck it is, he caught him in there. I was like, holy fucking shit. And, of course, you know, he was the power. So, when I'm looking at, um, oh, Slater, I was like, well, clearly he's going to be, you know, high flying, quick. But he had a, a more of a technical, uh, game there. And I was like, oh, fuck. Like yes, I want. That's what I like to see right there. Like, I'm, I'm I'm hardcore on the technical aspect of you know wrestling. I prefer to see a technical wrestler than a high flyer any day. So I was just like, great. I guess it's great because typically you got a big guy and a small guy. It's always power and you know high flying. And this you know is, you know is power and technician. So I was like, holy shit. Uh, but yeah, they just bulldoze over Prospect. Prospect not having a good week. Like it was weird. They came off such a high, you know, built to destroy. You know. Uh, Oh, Gracie and uh, Lucas, they you know, they won their match. And then uh, fucking Drake interferes and like beats the fuck out of uh, Jay Lethal. And that awesome promo that James Kennedy gives at the beginning of the night, I was just like, yeah, these guys are riding high. Uh, no, they got killed. Like, every match is in, just got slaughtered. Uh, but great showing for uh, Moss and Slater. And like I said, I'm hoping they beef up the tag division. I really do. And not just throwing people random again. I, mean, I want to see actual tag teams because... Don't get me wrong, I'm glad the women's division is up and going, but I want to see a tag division. Like, I hope we get enough people in here for, you know, for more, more titles and everything else. So, let's just hope that happens. Um, and then we get a little uh, glimpse at uh, Prince Amin and Gabriel Kidd are exiting the hotel. And Prince Amin's like, well, you know, we got to head to the arena. Gabriel Kidd goes to Hell Cab. And he's like, oh, no, 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 piggyback ride all the way there. Which is odd because, like, he, he wasn't here tonight. I mean, I guess that makes sense. He... You, you make it done. Piggyback ride probably took a while, and it was late in the show. But of course, I know like you know they put both shows together, like Nate Hill. You know, he'll probably be on next week. But still, it's just funny. It was like, oh yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> like, how fucked up is that? Like he's taking this serve two thing to a whole new level. And then, uh, but yeah, time for the main event. So seriously, you didn't get a little bit of wood from her doing the gum thing? No. Black and one back. Uh, but anyway, so main event time. Uh, it's uh, number one contender for the uh, WCPW World Title. Yeah, Doug Williams versus Aaron Stevens. Doug Williams uh, starts off with his promo uh, backstage, and he has like a whole like British Donald Trump thing going, talking about how like you know the British you know wrestling scenes you know as hot as it's ever been, but you got all these foreigners coming in you know taking credit for it, taking taking the matches away from you know hardworking Brits like himself. Great, like I was just like yes. Um, the match itself. Now we're at the main event, and you guys know I haven't done my least favorite match of the night, and. This is my least favorite match of the night. Uh, now, it was cut short. I'm not going to lie, that, that definitely factored. As soon as I was like, oh, yeah, well, this is definitely going to you know, be it. But in all honesty, even if that didn't happen, it probably would have been anyways. The match itself, it, it wasn't bad, but it was just very basic. Like, in every single match up until this point, there has been at least, at least once, if not more, where I would be like, oh, shit. You know, I had some kind of actual audible outburst to what was on the screen. It, whether it was like a stiff kick, I'm like, oh shit, or an awesome move, oh nice. Whatever it was, I had some kind of a, you know, and this match, nothing in, until the moment. Uh, up until the ending, it was very, it was it's just a generic good guy versus bad guy match. And like I said, it's not, it wasn't a bad match. It just, there was nothing exciting. It was, just, it was slow pace, just kind of like, all right. Uh, once again, considering it's supposed to be the number one contender for the world title, I was expecting maybe a little more intense. No, like it was just a very basic, you know. Uh, but the ending, oh my god, when Williams goes to the top ropes, and of course the commentary team, and I mentioned you know earlier how like you know like they were just pros at this. Uh, they mentioned, you know, I mentioned, mentioned earlier when the, they did the Canadian story, it was a little botched, but he played it off like, oh, you know, she tried to get out the last second. Like, that's what good commentators do. Like, you know, they'll cover the mistakes. Like, they'll they'll take care of it. You know, don't worry about it. And the same thing, that, you know, he kind of planned the seat early. Like, oh, well, you know, we heard he, you know, just got out of surgery. He just got, got out of the doctor's office and, you know, he had some kind of, like, uh, nerve damage in his leg. Or he, they, they, they did something like that. He said something like that. Doug Williams goes to the top rope and, dude, like, 
I don't even know. I mean, I watched it like two or three times. I don't know what the fuck happened. Like, he just like, boom, he just fell off. Like, he, he didn't jump off. He literally just fell off the top row. Of course, Stevens gets out of the way. Dude, he lands like really bad on his neck. And of course, don't wrong. I mean, at this point, the crowd has been nuts. And they've been doing the right thing. You know, they, they, they've been cheering the good guy, booing the bad guy, everything like that. Dude, Williams goes off. And of course, dude, the crowd is just like, oh, fuck, you know. And it was one of those moments, like, you know, even as a fan at home, you're just like, oh, fuck. Fuck, like you know, because you know, no matter you know, your cheerleader, whatever, we all know, you know, it, it's wrestling. We we want our wrestlers to go home safe. Like you know, we, we want that safe, you know, return each time. And like I was just like, oh dude, like that's, that's it. Like he he like Brock Lesnar his neck. Like you remember the shooting star press at WrestleMania that Lesnar like you know missed and landed on his fucking head. That's what this guy did. And I was just like, oh dude, like that's it. Uh, and of course, you can see the concern on referee's face. And of course, he's talking to Steven. Steven goes over for a quick roll, you know, quick pin. One, two, dude, Williams kicks out. And I was just like, what the fuck? Dude, now the crowd is like clapping that. Like, now they're like, oh, because, you know, once again, you know, whatever the character is, good guy, bad guy, whatever. Dude, like, this guy just landed on his neck. Clearly didn't mean to. Like, he's going for, like, I think, he, I think they said, like, his finisher was like a double knee drop or some shit like that. But either way, he missed whatever the fuck he's going for and landed right there on his fucking neck. So, no matter who you are, good, bad, you get the cheer. Like, yes. The problem is, that was like, you know, clearly like, okay, the match is still going to go. It's hard to root against Doug Williams now because he is showing this sign of courage. You know, like, dude, like, seriously, fuck it. You're, it's cool. Like, we know what happened. You can take the, you know, lay down, let him pin you. And he wouldn't. He got back up. And I was like, oh, fuck. Stevens, like, as soon as Williams up, dude, here comes Stevens with a fucking clothesline. And, dude, it was brutal. And thing is, the crowd's not popping anymore because it's like, dude, we just saw this dude take a nasty fucking fall. And I was like, okay, well, that's the end. Like, they're going to give it a proper finish. One, two, steal. He gets up. And I was like, are you fucking, like, what are you trying to prove? Like, unless if you're booked to win and you're just trying to keep it, there's no reason to get up. Like, fucking just stay down. And dude, like, like at that point, it was just really, it was, it was hard to watch anyways because like, you got to know he's in pain. Like, he kept trying to get, another thing, he get back up. And tried to continue the match, and he just couldn't. Like you can just tell, he he was done. Uh, and there's even that awkward moment where they just kind of stood there for a second, kind of looking at each other, like, you know, what, what, what do you next? Like they didn't know what to do. Like it was literally like it was like I want to keep going. Steven's just like, dude, I don't know what the, you know. I'll try to bend you. You wouldn't let me bend you. Like what, what we're we gonna do now? They finally did. They they did an awkward kind of finish right there, and they they, they you know wrapped it up. And like I said, that's not a reason to like a match. Like I said, no me wrong. I applaud. Uh, Doug Williams for what he did. Like, seriously, it, 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 me, I would just like, I'm done. Like, pff, fucking roll me up. We're done. Finish it. Uh, he tried getting the match, and, you know, for all that, you know, hey, dude, you're, you're fucking awesome. Like, seriously, you're a rock star. You're a soldier. You know, not too many people will do that. You did. So, you know. But once again, it, you know, it was an abrupt finish to, you know, like I said, it wasn't really a standout match, you know, to begin with. Um, and like I said, it was just made it even more awkward because, like you said, you're supposed to be booing this guy, and the fact that this guy is showing this much courage and this much passion, it, it's hard to boo him. So even at the end of the match, when like Aaron Steven wins, he was doing this whole like towel gag early on that you know the crowd's going nuts for. He's trying to do it again, and, like no one cares because like they're all like, is Doug okay? And of course, Doug luckily got out. He walked out on his own. Uh, I hope they do. I hope you know Pachini or somebody on WCPW like gives like an update because I mean that was a brutal fucking fall. Like, I hope he's good. Um, but yeah, like I said, so it just, it just kind of like that, that moment kind of stole the thunder from the entire match. Uh, and, and all honestly, I mean, you think that, you know, even after, because you're just kind of like, oh, you know, that was, that was, that was very serious. Uh, of course, you know, Stevens win after the match. Uh, Blompier comes out because now it's going to be Big Game O versus uh, Aaron Stevens. And I think it's a couple weeks, I said. And um, so, you know, they're hyping that up. Of course, as he distracts him, uh, Big Game O runs in. Low blow to Stevens, and we're getting. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. I ate right before I did this, and I'm paying for it now. I'm very professional. Microphone's not plugged in. Uh, low blow to him, and of course, calls the, uh, you know, getting the feud going. Getting getting the, the bad, you know, bad blood boiling here. So, uh, overall, like I said, the, the entire car was, you know, really good. Uh, like I said, first match was great. Women's match was really good. Uh, and, and honestly, all the matches were solid. Like I said, this the last match, the main event, wasn't quite that solid, and... Don't get me wrong, I mean, it's, it, I hate the fact that their highlight was a botch off the top rope, because that's, that's a bad, you know, highlight to have. Uh, but like I said, it just, I'm not that excited for Stevens versus Damo, just because it just feels like this one has to be Damo winning. Because, once again, Stevens, you know, he's kind of a big name, and 
I don't know he'll come back every single month to do these shows or not. So I, I don't see them giving him the title just yet. Uh, and not just that, but we don't have the Rampage demo, you know, blow off match yet. So uh, not just that, but I feel like you know, for WCBW, you want to keep like your homegrown talent as your face of the company. So it, to me, it just seems like it's gotta be Demo, which I could be wrong. And once again, I, that's fine. Like if you know, if it ends up being you know Aaron Stevens winning the title or whatever, you know, I, I have faith in these guys that they're gonna make a good story out of it. I'm just saying for right now, this this feud doesn't really draw me in. At least not yet. We'll wait and see where, you know, in the upcoming weeks we'll see where it goes. But for right now, uh, I'm more, you know, curious about the uh, Hendry Connors, you know, saga. And, of course, I'm, you know, you know see where El Aguero goes next. And, of course, I want to see more of the Martin Kirby, uh, Grado thing. So, uh, but right now, like I said, overall, though, the, the car was solid. Uh, you know, all matches were good. Like I said, and the last match wasn't bad. I'm not giving the big thumbs down or anything like that. Don't get me wrong. It was a, you know, good match. It was just... The least exciting of the, of the bunch, and like I said, it really, the only time it got my attention, unfortunately, was the ending. And you know, uh, but yeah, like I said, overall, solid, solid stuff. So guys, keep it up, please. You know, keep going. Like I said, you guys are doing an excellent job. Uh, of course, you know, you got the views to prove it. You guys are, you know, knocking it out of the park right now. So hell yeah. All right, what you guys think? You know, let me know what you think down below. Drop that comment. Let's let me know what you thought. You know, if you thought the show was good. Maybe, you know, are you excited about, you know, Aaron Stevens versus Big Damo? Yeah, hey, let me know. So, uh, guys, share and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, of course, you know, show this video some of that thumb and love. And uh, follow me over on Twitter at WCPWReviewGuy1. Uh, that's all I got this week, guys. Uh, tune in uh, Friday. I'll be dropping the premiere episode of Main Event. So check that out and of course this weekend I'll be doing my unofficial uh, WCPW top 10 and of course the uh, WCPW weekly recap so got all that coming up so uh, yeah that's all I got guys thank you so much for watching and uh, yeah till next time